Welcome back to Story Recap. The movie begin in year 2049. In the same world as humans exist replicants. Artificially created humans from the Tyrell Corporation. They are ideal for slave labor because of their power. But after a series of bloodshed, their production was banned and the company went bankrupt. But in 2020, the demise of the ecosystem led to the emergence of industrial magnate Nyander Wallace, whose engineering helped defeat the famine. He soon bought what was left of Tyrell and launched a new line of replicants. But many of their previous models, such as the Nexus 8, survived and were recaptured and sent to retirement. The replicant hunter is still wanted. Same year, Los Angeles, California, a replicant named K is one of the new models. He has to track down and erase escaped replicants. He arrives at a protein farm in the suburbs, where he has tracked down Sapper Morton, one of the hiding replicants of Series 8. K suggests that Morton surrender. He prefers the peaceful conduct of affairs. But Morton has no intention of giving up. He attacks K, but to no avail. Morton explains to him that K kills his own kind because he has not seen the miracle and lunges at him. He has to be killed. As he is about to leave, he notices a flower lying near a tree. After scanning the area, he discovers a chest buried in the ground. He sends a forensic team to excavate and leaves himself. He arrives at the police office and is tested for replicants, then returns to his apartment in one of the not-so-great neighborhoods of Los Angeles. At home he is greeted by his friend Joy, who is an artificial holographic program who has no body. But he loves her and brings her a gift, an emanator device that gives her the ability to exist not only from a special device on the ceiling, but wherever she wants. Kay gives her freedom. The two of them, they go outside in the rain and cuddle. She is happy, but he gets a voicemail from the police saying they found a clue from what they dug up at the farm. A skeleton and a lock of hair were found in the trunk. They belonged to a woman who likely had complications during childbirth 30 years ago. Superficial cuts on the bones indicate that the cause of death was an emergency C-section. Looking closer, Kay discovers a serial number engraved on one of the woman's bones. This means that the skeleton did not belong to a person, but to a female replicant. This causes quite a stir since replicants were previously unable to reproduce. And if humans found out about it, there would be a massacre between humans and replicants, so he has to keep quiet. K is assigned to kill the child, destroy all traces, and burn down the farm. Before he leaves, he takes the hair he finds. After taking it to Wallace's company, he learns that the sample belongs to an old model. But there is almost no data on this model because of a certain blackout that's what people call an electromagnetic pulse that knocked everything out and destroyed almost all the digital files. What they find in the archive does turn out to be damaged and a female replicant, Love, comes to his rescue. She takes him to a room where she turns on an old audio recording. It shows one Rachel talking to Rick Deckard. Kay and Love conclude that there was some kind of connection between them. Kay decides to investigate. He decides to go to his old colleague Gaff, who lives in a nursing home. It turns out that Deckard was a loner, and he has been retired. Meanwhile, Love informs Wallace of what has happened, and a new replicant is born before their eyes. Wallace seems sympathetic to his creation, but upon learning that it cannot have children, he rips open his stomach. He needs more replicants. Millions will breed billions. Tyrell seemed to know how to endow robots with a working reproductive system, but that information disappeared during the blackout. The only way to find out this secret is to find Rachel's baby. He orders Love to retrieve Rachel's remains and follow Kay to retrieve the baby. Meanwhile, Kay strolls through town looking for dinner. The cloaked woman approaches the three replicant prostitutes and asks them to find out what Kay knows. The girls are afraid of him and leave, except for Mariette. But when she sees that he's carrying a holographic projector, she walks away from him. Kay considers a picture of a tree from the farm. He decides to go back to Sapper's farm and finds a baby sock in the piano along with a picture of a woman holding a baby in her arms. And on the tree, he discovers the date 6 He burns down the farm and leaves. In the meantime, Love comes to the station for Rachel's remains and kills Coco, the court agent. Kay brings the findings to her supervisor, Lieutenant Joshi. She begins to question him about his childhood memories. Kay recalls how he tried to hide his favorite toy, a wooden horse in an old factory. The other kids wanted to take it away. So he hid it in the stove. Kay recalls that the horse had the same date on it as the tree, but he doesn't tell Joshi about it. Assuming that the date carved on the tree and the horse means the date of birth, Kay starts digging through the DNA bank to find someone who was born on June 10, 2021. Joy joins him. He finds records of two children born that day, a boy and a girl. They have the same DNA. 
which is impossible because only identical twins have the same DNA and they must be the same sex, so he decides that one was copied from the other. The DNA data came from an out-of-town orphanage. Later, the girl dies of a genetic disease, so Kay speculates that the boy may have been hidden by replicants in an orphanage in the ruins of San Diego. He heads there. On the way, he is run over by a tribe of savages. They want to attack him already on the ground, but Love, chasing him from above, drops bombs on the savages. Kay manages to get to the orphanage, where the caretaker clearly uses the children as cheap labor. He gets the man to show him the old administrative files, but finds that the sections he is looking for have been ripped out completely. On his way out, he notices how familiar his surroundings seem. He goes deeper and discovers a furnace from his memories. The wooden horse is still hidden inside it. Not knowing what to do about it, he returns home. Joy convinces him that he is born, not made. Kay is special. She decides to call him by his real human name and chooses the name Joe to test the authenticity of his memories. He goes to Dr. Anna Stelline, who develops memory implants. She has a weakened immune system and must stay in the dome all her life, avoiding physical contact with humans. Her parents left Earth for one of the extraterrestrial colonies, but she was not allowed to go with them because of her illness. Anna's youth was lonely, but it made her imagination blossom, making her one of the best creators of artificial memories. Memories. Kay asks how one can tell the difference between fake memories and real ones. Stelline says that fake memories tend to be too detailed because real memories are messy, due to the fact that they tend to reflect an emotional rather than a photographic memory. But a well-constructed memory always contains something personal from the creator. Kay asks her to look into his memory and share her thoughts. A special device allows Stelline to see the memories in his head. Surprised, she says the memory is real. Kay leaves in a fit of rage. When he goes outside, he is apprehended by the police and sent for a replicant test, which he fails to near critical values. But he lies to her about finding and killing the child, which means he completed his assignment. She gives him two days to come to his senses. When he returns home, he finds Mariette. Joy sinks up with Mariette's body, and they make love to Kay. Joy wants to be real to him. The next morning, Kay seems to feel uncomfortable about the unexpected threesome. He is summoned to the station and leaves without saying goodbye, but not before Mariette has put a tracking device in his coat. Joy tells Mariette to leave, and Mariette scoffs at the fact that, having been in Joy's mind, she noticed that there was nothing much there. Kay tells Joy that people are coming for him. Joy insists on going with him so she can't reveal what she knows. Kay is against this because if he moves her into the mobile projector, it will put her at great risk. If the projector gets even the slightest damage, she will disappear. But, eventually, he agrees. She orders him to destroy the antenna in the projector so that it cannot be moved to another device, thus eliminating any possibility of tracking her. Love, who is monitoring the projector, is angry because she can no longer track it. Kay takes the wooden horse to specialist Doc Badger, who finds traces of radioactive tritium in the wood. There is only one area nearby that can explain where this wood and such high levels of radiation come from. Meanwhile, Love arrives at the station, asking Joshi to cooperate and tell her where Kay is. Joshi refuses, and Love begins to threaten her. She tortures Joshi to get information, but to no avail. So Love kills her and uses her computer to find Kay's whereabouts. Kay arrives at the abandoned ruins of Las Vegas and enters an abandoned hotel. Everything is guarded by landmines. Deckard lives here. And he is Kay at gunpoint. They fight until Deckard is convinced that Kay has only come for answers to questions. He says that Rachel was pregnant but has never seen the baby and does not know its whereabouts. Deckard was still being actively hunted. So out of love for her and the baby, he left a still pregnant Rachel in the care of people who could protect her. To love someone is to let go. He taught the other replicants how to fake birth records. After a while, Deckard notices that someone has entered the area. Convinced that Kay was being followed, they try to escape but a missile destroys Kay's car. They both lose consciousness, leaving him for dead. She kidnaps Deckard, kills Joy by breaking the projector, and takes Deckard to Wallace. They leave Kay behind, thinking they have killed him. He is rescued by a group of replicants who are fighting for his freedom. Mariette enters as well. Their leader, Fraser, tells Kay that she was with Rachel during the birth, and she died right during it. About how the replicants tried their best to hide the baby, because they saw it as a living miracle, and they staged blackout too. To destroy a lot of files and hide that information from people. If people found out about it, the replicants would have all the rights as a full-fledged race. Kay talks about being Rachel's baby, but Fraser talks about it being a girl. But he doesn't understand where he gets these memories from then. 
It's all part of the puzzle. They come to the conclusion that Deckard's daughter is actually Stelline, because she alone could have implanted any memories in the others. The replicants ask him to go back and not let Wallace get any information about the reproductive system, even if they have to kill Deckard. Otherwise, Wallace will create a self-reproducing army of slaves. Deckard is brought to Wallace, showing him Rachel's remains. He says he doesn't know where his child is. He then hints to him that their meeting with Rachel was set up from the beginning. He tries to get the information out of Deckard, but he fails. Then he resorts to Rachel's clone. But Deckard sees that she has a completely different eye color, and Wally's plan fails. He sends Deckard to one of the extraterrestrial colonies, where he will be tortured. Love flies out with Deckard in handcuffs, but Kay follows her. He hits her car with his and shoots Love, but she survives and gets into a fight with him. He thinks he kills Love with her own knife and goes to rescue Deckard. But Love reappears from the water in the half-flooded car and then she attacks him again. But once again he manages to repel her attack and Kay kills her. He brings Deckard to his daughter. And he himself lies down on the steps and watches the snow fall. He most likely dies from his wounds. He was just a pawn in this puzzle. Deckard sees his daughter. Dr. Anna Stelline, for the first time. 